I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast, For the Health of It. Remember to subscribe to our podcasts, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. What we're talking about today is exercise, but not what you expect. Most people think, okay, you're going to tell me how to do push-ups and sit-ups and work out my pecs. No, no, no. We're talking about why we need to exercise, but not just the classic exercise. We're talking about the benefits that occur from keeping the body in motion. I'm giving you some hints on what to do if you're not a gym rat. Most people are not gym rats. You don't want to go to a gym rat is somebody who hangs out at a gym, if you never heard that colloquialism. But if you're not somebody who likes to hang out at the gym, I'm one of them. What else can I do? What can I do to keep my body healthy if I don't have time? I don't want to go to the gym. Maybe I'm intimidated. I don't like, I, I think it's disgusting in gyms. I'm, I'm a little bit of a germaphobe. Um, but I don't want to touch these things that everybody's sweating on. So what do we do to stay, to keep the body healthy? And really simple thing is stay in motion. One of the tricks I do is when I do radio and television shows is I stand. And I try to get my other, my, co my colleagues in the business to stand when they do their shows too, because several things happen. Number one, you open up your diaphragm so you breathe better, your lungs work better. But it also helps because your body's in motion and it's keeping, it's putting neurological input up into the brain. Because the key to exercise is the brain has to control everything. So if your brain is working properly, you're working properly. And exercise is great because it sends stimulation up to the brain. The brain needs three things in order to work. It needs information, it needs input, it needs nutrition, and it needs stimulation. So when you're breathing, you're giving oxygen, which is going to give oxygen input. Stimulation is when your body's in motion, and then of course you need to have good nutrition. So exercise is a great way to put in stimulation and oxygen, but you don't have to go to the gym to do that, just go for a walk. And if you're walking on an uneven surface, like if you're going hiking, which is what I like to do, that puts more neurological input up into the brain, which makes the brain work more efficiently. So walking on pavement is great. Walking on an uneven surface, if you're capable of doing it, is even better. So that exercise is important to get the brain working, but again, it doesn't have to be that traditional what you're thinking of exercise. Now when you exercise, exercise creates a lot of acid waste in the body. Acids are chemicals, like we said, like Pac-Man, they eat through things. So you got to make sure you keep the acid, you do something to neutralize the acids. So what do we eat? Things like peas, nuts, seeds are great after a workout because they're higher in fats and proteins, but no processed sugar of any kind. Not even sports drinks or fruit for at least two to three hours because the sugar is going to shut down the production of your human growth hormone or slow it down. You can have a salad after you work out. Include something called nutritional yeast. Now, if you don't know what nutritional yeast is, it's one of my favorite foods in the world. It's a yellow powder. It comes from bacteria. It's made from bacterial yeast. And it's not yeast like you're thinking about going to get into the body and cause yeast infections. This is a different type of yeast. But it's an excellent source of amino acids, which are broken down proteins. It has good fat in it. And it has a lot of B vitamins. And the B vitamins are necessary for the brain and the muscles to work. So when I, every time I have a salad, every day, whatever I'm eating, I put nutritional yeast on it, soup, salads. It's a very savory flavor. So it, I've tried it in smoothies. I've tried mixing it with Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Not a big fan because it has, it has a, a more savory flavor. It doesn't mix well with sweet. But with salads, it's great. You could put hemp seeds. We, talked, we did a show a couple of weeks ago on protein. It's on drjoe.com, drjoe.com. We talked about protein. Most of you are getting way more protein than you possibly ever need. And you people worried about protein, you could do things like chia seeds, hemp seeds. I would recommend using raw organic apple cider vinegar as part of the dressing. Now in another book that I wrote called uh, Eating Right for the Health of It, we have recipes in that book. It, it tells you how to change your diet and its recipes. We have a whole chapter on salad dressings. Because people say, well, I don't know what to put on my salad. So it's a whole chapter on salad dressings. So if you use apple cider vinegar, raw organic apple cider vinegar with maybe some uh, avocado oil or olive oil, it's going to give you an amazing source of energy for your body that's easily to digest, and it includes tons of nutrients, and you're going to feel great. So if you, want, if you don't believe me, you could try this. After a workout, try having some pizza or whatever, cake or whatever. Now, try doing what I say. Maybe a salad with nutritional yeast and, some, some, uh, and then Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. You're going to be amazed 
at the difference. Because sometimes when people work out, they're so tired, they don't want to work out anymore. This is going to solve that problem. Instant energy boost for most people. Would you like that right now? Bet you would. So I'm going to tell you about an exercise that can instantly give you energy. And I'm going to teach you how to do a quick little exercise that can improve your brain function, your memory, your energy level, your coordination. And it only takes 30 seconds to do, and you can do it anywhere. How many people want to know about this exercise? It's amazing. I do it every day, and it's called a cross crawl. And it forces us to use both sides of our brain. The right side, the cross crawl is such a powerful exercise because it recalibrates your neurology. It essentially reboots your brain. Now you can do it anytime. Uh, you should especially try it first thing in the morning because it stimulates the central nervous system. Now there's two types of nerves in the body. The nervous system has what's called sympathetic nerves, which speeds you up. And then there's the parasympathetic nerves that slow you down. So when you get out of bed in the morning, you're in what's called the parasympathetic mode. You're in a slow down mode. You can actually kickstart your sympathetic nervous system with this cross crawl. So what do you do? Stand up straight, lift your left leg and your right arm, and then put them down. Okay, so right, left arm, right leg, and then you do the right arm, left leg. And it's like, a, it, it, it's like marching in place, real simple. Opposite leg to the arm. So some people, and this is interesting, if they can't do this. And when I do a group, I'll have them stand up, I'll do the march, and they'll say, I'll look around and probably about 5%, sometimes 10% of the group can't do right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. They do right arm, right leg, left arm, left leg. They do it the same side. That's called ipsilateral. Ipsilateral meaning the same side. We want contralateral, opposite sides working together to integrate the brain. So right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. And you can just do it for 30 seconds. And it's funny because a lot of times when I'm doing TV or radio and uh, I'll see my crew, you know, my, my engineers and my cameramen, and they'll be behind the camera and they'll be doing right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. And at the break, I'll say, tired? Oh man, I'm so tired. This just perks me right up. So as soon as you get out of bed, if you could do right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg, 30 seconds, you're going to be amazed. Now it's going to feel weird, but you sh it should feel natural very quickly. That's what's kind of cool about this. And all you have to do is something as simple as this. When you get out of bed, walk to the bathroom. And as you're walking to the bathroom, walking to the kitchen, wherever you're going, right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg, and do it exaggerated. Now, whoever you live with is going to think you're crazy, but that's okay. They didn't listen to the show and you did, so you're smarter than them. And just do this exercise. You'll be fascinated what happens. And if you do it for a couple of days, you'll say, you know, I don't mind getting out of bed anymore. I don't mind getting ready for work. I don't need that coffee as much. Hopefully, not at all. So it's really kind of cool. And this is a simple exercise that's gonna pump the cerebrospinal fluid, integrate the brain, get the muscles moving, pump the lymphatic system, get the heart moving. No downside, 30 seconds. Now, I did an experiment one time, and this is fun. I was, I was giving a lecture at a high school, and they had an athletic team I was talking to. So I had their, their star basketball players. And I said, all right, shoot a foul shot. And they were shooting shots, and they were good. And I said, okay, I want you to march in place, right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. And they shot again, and they did very good, even better. I said, I'm going to mess up your brain. I want you to march the wrong way. Right arm, right leg, left arm, left leg. And so they did it. I said, try shooting a basket, a, shot, a foul shot now. Not even close. And these are good athletes. I'm like, what'd you do to me? They got scared. They thought I broke them, you know? I said, it's okay, let's reboot. And I did right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. And they were amazed. And I said, every time before a game, I want you to do this. This is a trick I want you to use in your life every day. When you have a test, when you have a job uh, interview, when you're tired at work, when you have to deal with family crisis, you have to deal with stress, uh, whenever there's a moment where you need that extra boost of energy, I want you to take 30 seconds, right arm, right, left leg, left arm, right leg. It's incredible what'll happen. It's so cool to watch it. And I've done this with patients, I've done it in lectures, and I can show you. I mean, I can stand you up, push on your arm, and you'll be strong. And then I can mess you up, march the wrong way, push on your arm, you have no strength in your body. Reboot the brain with the cross crawl, instantly you're strong again. There's no downside to this, folks. It takes 30 seconds. It really is that cool. Now, I want to talk about the use of a piece of fitness equipment I called a rebounder. Now, this can add overall health and a feeling of wellness to your body. A rebounder is not someone who you're dating after, having a crush, after breaking up with somebody. This is a different type of rebound. A rebounder is a mini trampoline. Now, you can get these in your home. I have one next to my bed in my bedroom. And using one can stimulate your sympathetic nervous system. 
So if you don't have time for full workout, you can do a 30 second cross crawl on the rebounder. A rebounder can also help your digestive system because jumping up and down helps stimulate your sympathetic nervous system. Remember, we're trying to get you out of that parasympathetic resting mode into the sympathetic mode, and that can help get the muscles contracting again. So it'll increase your metabolism, it create energy, get your brain working better. Now, a rebounder can also help your digestion because when you jump up and down, it, it causes the bowels to physically push things down. And that can help get rid of a lot of waste products and poisons first thing in the morning. Some people say, well, Dr. Joe, I can't go to the bathroom unless I have my cup of coffee. That's chemically stimulating, actually it's temperature stimulating the bowels. Here we're gonna physically stimulate your bowels. So by jumping up and down, it's gonna stimulate the bowels and that can help get rid of a lot of that junk that's in the body. Uh, working out on a rebounder can stimulate your lymphatic system. Bouncing up and down on a rebounder is gonna stimulate the lymphatics to flush themselves out because you're contracting your muscles. You're getting a double whammy with the cross crawl on a mini trampoline, the bowels, the lymphatic system, the heart rate, sympathetic, it's unbelievable. It's a good method to get exercise by measuring your daily steps. This is another thing you can do. I'm jump, jumping ahead of myself here. What you do is I want you to get yourself a pedometer. Now don't use your phone, because if you use your phone, your phone is putting off electromagnetic frequencies. And electromagnetic frequencies, I've done shows on this before, can get into the body and actually short circuit the nervous system. If the nervous system is getting short circuited, it's not gonna work properly. Now as a chiropractor and as a health guru, I wanna make sure that you're as healthy as possible. And I've done shows on electromagnetic frequencies and how bad they are for the body. So if you're gonna take a phone and put it in your back pocket or your front pocket, you're short circuiting the nervous system. So I'd rather you get a pedometer. They cost about five or $10 in stores, you know, the, 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 the groups, the big stores, I don't wanna say any brand names, um, but put it on your belt. And your goal should be 10,000 steps a day. Now, new research is showing that 6,000 steps a day is also really good. I'd rather you do 10. That's equivalent of about a 20 minute aerobic workout. So get your pedometer, wear it for five days, don't do anything yet, and just figure out how many steps you take in a day. The average person takes about five or 6,000 steps a day. Then you start trying to get to 10,000 steps a day, you're gonna find, find yourself looking for ways to increase the number of steps you take. You can do this by parking far away. When you come to our office to get chiropractic care, park in the front of the building, walk around back, uh, take the stairs instead of the elevators. Really simple things like that. Now at the end of the day, you notice you haven't gotten your steps in. You're gonna be motivated to keep moving because now suddenly you have to be responsible to someone. It really is the easiest, quickest way to have a low stress workout, 10,000 steps a day. One of my colleagues on radio, uh, Eric Von Hessler, he was getting on in his weight. One day he said to me, he says, wait till you're my age. And I said, Eric, I'm five years older than you. He said, you are not. I told him how old he was. He says, oh my God, now he, doesn't, he looks like he's much older than me. And he was kind of chubby and he decided that he was gonna start doing 10,000 steps a day. So on radio, we, there's breaks. And so every break, he just walks around the building, walks around the studio, walks around the offices. And he's lost so much weight, he looks great, he's got more energy, he says he's sleeping better, his brain is working better, he's better on the air. So it's amazing what happens when you get the body in motion and that pumps the cerebrospinal fluid and the lymphatics. It can ease pain. You might be avoiding workout because you're always hurt when you start a new exercise plan. But did you know that you can uh, determine how much pain you feel when the body is injured because you can determine what you're eating? I have so many people come in and I look at their diet and they say, Doc, I'm sore after I work out. I'm sore after I'm doing 10,000 steps. I'm sore after my cross crawl. I'm sore. I said, what are you eating? And then I look at their diet and certain foods are going to facilitate the healing process, help it. Other foods are going to actually exacerbate your pain. So there are certain foods you're eating that are making you more painful. Now, it could be from exercise, it could just be from daily work. So I really want you to consider cutting out certain things in your diet <coughs> and adding certain things. Now, if you have a diet high in omega-6 fatty acids, that's not good because omega-6 fatty acids cause inflammation. Another fatty acid is known as omega-3 fatty acids. And omega-3 fatty acids help reduce the pain. Okay, so that's what we need to do is help bring down the, the, the inflammation. Now, the average American takes too many omega-6s and not enough omega-3s. This is huge when it comes to healthcare. If we can just balance out the omega-3s and the omega-6s, we would be great. In a healthy diet, 
One omega-3 to one omega-6 is the perfect ratio. You can go up to five or six omega-6s to one omega-3. Most Americans get 20 to 30 omega-6s to every omega-3. Now this is gonna convert into excess acids if you're taking the omega-6s and that's not good for us. Okay, that's gonna be a problem. Because when you have too much omega-6s, it converts into prostaglandin E2. Prostaglandin E2 causes inflammation that can irritate nerves and increase pain. Now, prostaglandin E2 is a biological equivalent of putting gasoline on a fire. Ouch. But as you increase your intake of omega-3s, they're going to block the chain of events that cause inflammation, thus cause a decrease in pain. So, Dr. Joe, what you're telling me is I can actually reduce my pain levels by changing the way I eat. And I would give you an emphatic yes. Because most people are eating omega-6 fatty acids, which is the standard American diet. And this is when we eat too much of the bad fats and not enough of the good fats. So by decreasing the amount of omega-6s you're taking in and increasing the amount of omega-3s you take in, you can, in fact, reduce your pain levels because you're reducing inflammation. Now, if you think you can't build up big muscles on a good diet or plant-based diet, of course, I, 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 I pushed a plant-based diet, there's a new documentary out. I want you to watch it. It's called Game Changers. Now, Game Changers talks about professional athletes that have changed their diet and have improved, dramatically improved, their performance. So what happens is people are changing their diets. In fact, it was the, it was the Tennessee Titans football team. Like a third or half of the team went to a plant-based diet and saw an amazing improvement in their performance. So if you're thinking to yourself, I got to eat, these, these, eat tons of meat and I got to eat protein, I got to eat bacon and eggs, Omega-6 fatty acids increase inflammation. It can clump your red blood cells together. If you're eating a lot of saturated fats, animal proteins especially, and animal fats, clump your red blood cells together, you can't carry oxygen. If you can't carry oxygen, you get tired. Simple test. Tomorrow for lunch, or today for lunch, whenever, I want you to have a big salad. Nutritional yeast, maybe some hemp seeds, some chia seeds, some sunflower seeds, and uh, apple cider vinegar, uh, olive oil dressing, and see how you feel. The next day, I want you to have a big pizza. It has cheese, which is the number one food allergen. It has wheat, which is the number two food allergen. It has loaded with omega-6 fatty acids. And see how you feel. You're going to feel awful. So people say to me all the time, Dr. Joe, don't you miss, I'm Italian, cannolis. Don't you miss brajol? brajol. Yeah, but it's nice. It's a memory is all it is. I remember things as a child that I'll never have again. And I can remember these things and say, yeah, I do miss them, but it's nothing more than a memory because I know what happens when I put these things in my body. And when you put these things in your body, you're adversely affecting your health. And if you're trying to work out, you're trying to get exercise, which is today's show, and you're putting these chemicals in the body and then you have bones out of place, it's causing more damage than the exercise is giving you. You're going to a negative uh, benefit and we don't want that. So exercise is a very good way to enhance the immune system. Another benefit. Recent studies have shown that too much exercise can have a reverse effect on the immune system's ability to help us keep our disease low or, uh, disease free. Low to moderate exercise is going to help build and maintain a healthy immune system. Again, <clears throat> walking, one of the best forms of exercise. It's low impact on the joints, and as a chiropractor, again, I want to make sure those joints are being protected. It can be done just about anywhere. You can do it with anyone. You can do it by yourself. It not only helps the body, but also creates endorphins in the brain. Now, endorphins are chemicals that make you feel good. Okay, endorphins are the chemicals that give you pleasure. Too much exertion actually lowers the ability to fight disease and leaves you susceptible to attack from bacteria, other microorganisms. Too much exercise can also create what we call free radicals. And I kind of brushed on that before. These are molecules that attack the cells and can cause the cells to weaken or even die. If free radical attack is on the DNA of the cells, it can cause them to mutate, and that can lead to abnormal cell growth. Mutated DNA can actually cause cancer growth. So exercising three times a week for 20 minutes a day is going to do your body good. If you do a high-intensity interval training, you only do it twice a week. It's also better to exercise regularly, even for short periods. It's better to do that than to work out very hard, but only once in a while. So I'd rather have you not work out or work out regularly, or just stay in motion really is going to be the key. A few minutes a day or every other day is better than one hour every week. Remember, there are three things that nerves need, oxygen, stimulation, and nutrition. 
So if a nerve is being pinched, it's not going to get the proper stimulation, and exercise can help sometimes alleviate that problem. But if the bone is being pinched, it can make it worse if the bone is pinching a nerve. Oxygen, obviously, brought into the body through breathing when you exercise. You breathe more. So when it comes to exercise, the secret to doing something that you like so that you can do it more often. I can sit here and tell you you need to do a four-minute exercise or eight-minute exercise. You need to do aerobics or weight training. But in the end, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it if you don't like it. There are several exercises I don't like. For example, jumping rope. If I jump rope, it gives me a headache. I've got an old neck injury. I got hit by a car when I was 10. I played football, hockey, street fights. I've got some injuries that prevent me from doing certain exercises. Now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't jump rope. It just means that when I do it, it's not a good exercise for me. So try different things. Find out what works for you. And remember, if it hurts, stop. Now, you could be a little sore, but if it causes pain that lasts more than three days, you need to come see us because chances are it's a bone out of place or there's damage to the body, and we've got to get that fixed. So that's my rule. If you work out and three days later you're still sore, go to drjoe.com, drjoe.com, make an appointment to come see us because chances are you did some damage, and then we can fix it and get you right back to working out again. If you're working out, you're going to feel a little sore from time to time, but if you're working out and you feel like your shoulder is going to come out of socket or you're getting a blazing headache or numbness, and it, that's not right. You could be causing serious damage and you need to stop. You need to build up strong muscles around straight bones, not strong muscles around crooked bones. And if you think that you have pain and you can simply take a cortisone shot, let's say. This is something that just came out in the news. Uh, I'm just going to get a cortisone shot and that's going to help cover up my pain and that's going to solve the problem. Well, think again. New study, like I said, just released shows that cortisone shots, which are so common, can do way more harm than previously thought. I always knew this, now we have the science to back it up. It can lead to things like localized osteoporosis. What does that mean? Osteoporosis is thinning of the bones. And you think of osteoporosis with old women, right? I've got thin bones, my bones fracture. Yes, that happens because of a bad diet. That happens from hormone imbalances. If you eat a high acid diet, Things like alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. These are acids. And acids, when they get in the body, have to be neutralized. And the body uses calcium as its primary neutralizing agent. So the body is giving up calcium from the bones to neutralize the acid, because if the acid is in the blood, it can cause some real serious damage. So that that's, leads to osteoporosis, thinning of the bones. Cortisone shots can also lead to osteoporosis at the site of the injections. So if we give you a cortisone shot, it can cover up the pain. Does it work? In most cases, very well. You can move around more, but that can cause more damage long term. So you've got to be careful with this because I've had people come in and say, Dr. Joe, I hurt my hip working out. I hurt my knee, got a cortisone shot. I was able to work out the next day. Wow, is that a bad news? What do you mean? Well, you're not in pain anymore. I know I'm not in pain anymore. Well, now you're moving things around. You're causing more damage. Never thought about that. And then many times that leads to another cortisone shot. You can only do three shots in an area, by the way, in a lifetime. A good doctor is only going to give you three shots in an area and say, I'm done. I can't do anything else. And we get a lot of referrals from sports medicine doctors, from orthopedists, neurologists who have done this. And they say, Joe, we don't know what else to do. It's not a surgical case. We've already given them three shots. We don't want to put them on opioids because that's going to help. You know, that can feed the opioid crisis. Some people get addicted. What do we do? Let's send them over to Dr. Joe and his staff of amazing chiropractors. I feel I have some of the best chiropractors in the world. That's my opinion. And let's see if we can get this fixed. And in most cases, we get amazing results. So if you have to get a cortisone shot, if you have to take medication, I'm not against that. If you have to have surgery, I'm not against that. But what I try to do is get to the cause of the problem, not just treat the symptoms, fix the problem so that it doesn't cause long-term damage. And then we do a nutritional workup with you, make sure you're getting the right nutrients. The minimum supplements you should be taking every day, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, the absolute minimum supplements you should be taking every day. And they're on the website, drjoe.com. They're two powders. I mix them together. I shake it up with coconut milk or almond milk, and I drink it every single morning. Now, if I have a big day, if I have a bunch of radio, television, bunch of patients, maybe I've got a hot date, I'm going to take a double dose, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And so that's what you really need. Now, folks, I'm running out of time. If you need more information, go to our website, drjoe.com. If you want to make an appointment to come see us, and I think you should, I want you to stop suffering needlessly. 
I want you to go to our website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com, make an appointment. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge in the Atlanta area. Now, I know this show goes all over the world, so if you want to do a, a nutrition consultation, we can do that over the phone. Just go to the website, call us, 844-44-DR-JOE is, is the phone number, and you can call us, and we can set up a nutrition consultation over the phone. But get well, stop suffering. The biggest complaint I get, and I've been doing this for 35 years now, I've missed a half a day of work in 35 years. The biggest complaint I get is, why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I suffer for so long? And my answer is always, I don't know. I don't know why you suffered so long, but that's why we're the, 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 the go-to clinic for doctors, hospitals, sports people, and hopefully you too. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. The website again, drjoe.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to For the Health Fit. Remember to subscribe to this podcast and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 Eastern time on wsbradio.com and on a WSB Radio app.